Good evening, um, Tiffany Belfield Elamine here with another Wednesday webinar, sharing resources, um, connecting some of the content that you see on our social media as far as our graphics. What does that mean? Why am I taking this survey? What's this assessment mean? Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, the Feeding Kentucky um, assessment tool that has been posted. Um, what is that all about? Um, I'll walk through the survey and then we will introduce our guest speaker. So I'm going to start off with sharing my screen. Just a second. Because sometimes people just um, naturally see survey and decide they don't want to do it. Um, they don't want to take that time. The teen question, feeding Kentucky markets assessments. Um, myself with Community Farm Alliance and Tatum Lewis with Complexions um, Community Development um, worked with Sarah Vaughn with Feeding Kentucky and we put together a very simple short assessment that captures, oh Lord, sorry, <laughs> that captures information um, to help us understand why people aren't using this market um, as a resource. Um, I know a lot of farmers like to give their food away and that's wonderful. Uh, food banks, um, as she will, I'm sure, describe, you know, they intentionally go into neighborhoods and communities who need um, access to healthy foods. So um, why not make a profit for your farm business to continue to help the community um, and you know, still help your community. You're still giving your seconds and your best and your best to um, communities who are deserving but do not get the accessibility to that. So here's the the um, the assessment. Simple questions about your age, gender, race, ethnicity, where you're located at, what you're raising, what you're growing, what you're selling, um, and then we ask questions if you think that you grow enough or extra for your markets. Um, questions like, how much have you wasted in the last year? Are you even familiar to Feeding Kentucky and or food banks here in Kentucky? Have you ever participated in the program? These questions, if they're just blanketed known because you do not understand the answers we've got is why we are doing this webinar today. Uh, like I said, it's an easy 13 question um, assessment. Please get it done. We want these done. Um, by the end of May, um, for sure. So I am going to now introduce our special guest. We have Miss Sarah Vaughn. Um, she is the por uh, program's um, director of Feeding Kentucky, and she has a presentation to uh, better explain why um, we have collaborated, uh, what their markets do, and what are the requirements for you to even engage into this uh, market. So I'm going to give it to her and let her take over. Do you need to share a screen? I will make you co-host so you can share a screen. There you go. Alrighty. Well, welcome everybody. And I'm glad that you're able to join us for our, what did you call it, Tiffany, your Wednesday? Um, My Wednesday webinar. Wednesday <laughs> webinar. Yeah. Um, that's very neat. And um, I'm happy to be here and to talk to you a little bit about our um, Farms to Food Banks program. And let's see here. I think I've got it backwards where you're seeing my notes instead of the main presentation, but um, let me try to switch it real quick. Okay. All righty. Um, well, as Tiffany mentioned, my name is Sarah Vaughn and I work for an organization called Feeding Kentucky. And first I'll start off by um, letting you know like more about what Feeding Kentucky is because a lot of people aren't aware. 
Um, but we are a statewide network of seven food banks and over 800 um, partner feeding organizations, such as food pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters. Um, as you can see from this, the map on your screen, we uh, collectively, we serve the entire state of Kentucky with, with partnerships of our seven food banks. Uh, and to give you an idea, there's a difference between a food bank and a food pantry. And those terms are kind of used interchangeably. And so it gets a little bit confusing, um, but there actually is a difference between the two. So a food bank is a large distribution center, kind of like a, I think of like a Sam's Club or a Costco where there's big racks of shelving and food and food items in bulk. And then um, the food pantry is the local agency where um, people would go, people who are in need of food will, would go to get the food. So um, the food banks usually dis distribute the food out to the food pantry. Um, and Feeding Kentucky is a network, like I mentioned, we serve all 120 counties in Kentucky and we reach an estimated one in seven Kentuckians each year. That includes, um, seniors, children, um, just anybody who needs access to food. And last year we distributed the equivalent of 79 million meals across our network. Um, and we have a few main goals that we do as an organization. Um, we try to increase the quality uh, and variety and nutritional um, value of food that goes to feed people in Kentucky. And we try to, we advocate and try to educate the public about um, the issue of hunger in our state and what they can do to help. And then um, we're also there to help um, when there's a, a disaster in the state. So like when the tornadoes happened in Western Kentucky, we were um, collecting donations that we could um, give to the food banks that, that were affected and help them rebuild and feed those who had had been withstood the tornado. Um, and we also try to coordinate um, do food donations to them as well. We had a lot of people stepping up wanting to donate food um, after the tornadoes happened. And then we just try to build alliances and partnerships that impact hunger relief in Kentucky, similar to the partnership that we have with Tiffany and Community Farm Alliance. Um, we just, we partner with groups that have similar missions to us um, because we can do more together than we can by ourselves. But um, that first bullet point about increasing the quality, the quantity of food and the nutritional variety, one way we do that is through our Farms to Food Banks program. And that is the program that I'm gonna focus on most during this presentation because that's the program that I, um, that I administer. So, what is Farms to Food Banks? Farms to Food Banks is, um, through this program, we take agricultural products from farmers who need a market and bring those to Kentuckians in need. And the reason we do that is to increase access to fresh fruits and vegetables to um, the people who maybe not, might not be able to afford it. And then we also want to support our local Kentucky farmers um, because a lot of times, you know, they, they need that little safety net. Like if they grew too much or they, um, have more, or if they lost their market or if they have more than what they could sell at their farmer's market or wherever they, um, sell their product, we want to be able to let them know that we'll be there to take whatever extra they have and they won't have to throw it away. And that leads to the third part, which is, um, reducing waste. And last year, we distributed 3.3 million pounds of fresh produce across the state. Um, we distributed 28 different types of produce and all 120 counties received some product. And that comes out to about 5.6 million meals. And we um, spent $878,000. That, that's money that went directly back to farmers and the community for the, the products that they provided to us. And 
to go more into our impact on farmers, we worked with 332 farmers from 57 different counties. On average, we paid about $2,000 per farmer, but it's, it's based on how much product they bring in throughout the year. The most $150 per farmer bring in um, fresh produce, meat, meat and eggs pretty much consistently throughout the season. Um, but 14 farmers received more than $10,000 last year. And so how you can sign up, um, all that we require for farmers to participate in the program is to fill out a participant agreement form. And those can be downloaded from our website, which is feedingky.org. Um, and there's a tab called programs at the top. And you can um, like a pop up window or a drop down menu will pop up and you can select farms to food banks and from there um, information for farmers. And also on that page is where you can find our cro crops list, which gives you an example of all the different types of produce that we accept and um, as well as like an average price that we've paid for those items to give you kind of an idea of the reimbursement that you get. And the, the best way I can explain the payment process is that um, you're, this program is not meant for farmers to make a profit, but the idea of it is that we will take whatever you can't sell through your typical markets and we'll give you enough money to where you're at least not losing money on it. Like um, think of it as if you're donating the product, you're like the, the squash or whatever it might be, you're donating that. But what we're reimbursing you for is your expenses. So we'll reimburse you for your, your transportation costs to deliver that to us. We'll reimburse you for your, um, the boxes and your packaging materials and your labor to pick it. Um, and that's kind of how I like to explain it to people. Um, we're kind of like a market clearing program. And then um, a lot of farmers will ask, like, do you require a contract or, or is it a contract? So no, our participant agreement is not a contract. If you fill it out and you never have any extra, then um, I'm not gonna reach out to you and say, hey, farmer Bob, you didn't bring us any corn this year. What's, what's up? You know. Um, it's kind of like um, there's no contract and that's also two it goes both ways so if for example we run out of money in July then and you have um, winter squash in October then we if we don't have any money left then we won't be able to pay for it but um, I'm not saying that to scare you because that typically does not happen but it could happen and so or we might be full of squash at the food bank and not have a need for more. And we might have to have you wait until wait a week or so until we have time to distribute what's already in the warehouse. But again, that doesn't happen very often. Typically, we're able to take whatever you have whenever you have it. And there's no maximum or minimum delivery requirements. You can bring something as small as like a sack of potatoes or as large as a semi load of produce. It just depends on, um, we try to meet farmers where they're at with what they've got and, and try to make it as simple as possible for them to participate. And um, we don't require any GAP certification or any type of certification for you to participate. All that you have to, the only requirement that you have to meet is that you have to be a Kentucky farmer and you have to have grown the product yourselves like we don't want you going and buying it and trying to sell it to us um, we want it to be your product but that's really the only um, requirement and I'll talk a little bit about how the your uh, participant agreement form and you've got so let's say you filled out your form and the season's going in full swing and you've got some extra let's just say tomatoes and so you would call me um, and I'll show you my contact information. Um, you would call me and you would say, Sarah, I've got uh, four boxes of tomatoes that I would like to deliver next Tuesday. 
at one o'clock. And so what I will do is I will create a purchase order and that purchase order will, um, it's basically, we use QuickBooks, but it's a, it's a sheet of paper that will have your name and address on your contact information on it. And then it will have a description of the items you're bringing and it will be sent out to the food bank that you're going to deliver to, to let them know that you're coming. And um, once that purchase order is in the system, that's pretty much your appointment. So once you have an appointment and a purchase order, then you would just go to the food bank when you're scheduled to be there and show up and they will help you unload your product. And they have at the food banks, they have pallet jacks, uh, forklifts, they have staff that's there to help you unload and they will um, inspect your product for quality and make sure everything looks good and they'll weigh it for you. And then you would just um, bring an invoice with you when you deliver and give that, give them a copy of the invoice, which they scan and send to me. And then from our office is where we write your checks and um, distribute payment. And we try to get checks in the mail to farmers within two weeks of their delivery date. So I know in some markets, um, you may not get paid instantaneously, instantaneously for your food, um, but we try to do it as quickly as possible so that you're not waiting months and months to receive your check. And um, lastly, I'll finish up by saying that we're trying to, um, we're making progress towards being able to do ACH transfers for the payments to farmers, but as of right now, we're still old school writing checks and mailing them through snail mail. But um, hopefully by the time, you know, by this summer, we'll be able to start doing um, direct deposit if, if that's something that you're interested in. So um, at this time, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has about the program. I saw a few people hop on since I've been talking, so. I'll ask a question. Um, so is there a, um, like a designated time to um, apply? Is there an open window? When is your season? Um, I don't know if I missed that, um, but I just wanna make sure, or, or is it just like you get on and you see, oh, they need, tomatoes and you just fill out the form and say, hey, I'm ready to sell my tomatoes. Yeah, that's a good question. So I did not address that previously, but um, basically there's no start and end time to our season. Like we're ready right now, but I realize that a lot of farmers are just now getting their plants in the ground. Um, so we typically our season will start at the end of May and really start ramping up in June, July, and August. And those are our three um, busiest months. But of course we, we will accept produce through the fall up until it frosts, you know, as long as you guys have produce to deliver and we have money available to pay you for it, we will take it. So um, there's no start and end date. And the participant agreement form that I mentioned, there's no deadline to fill those out. I, you just need to have one submitted to our office before you deliver. And we ask farmers to fill those out every single year just to, um, just to refresh their memory on the rules of the program and in case anything changes. But um, so I, and I usually mail those out. So the farmers that participated in the program last year have already received a copy of the agreement form for this year. And that's kind of like, we don't do, like I pretty much just send them a copy of the letter and then they can sign it at their leisure and send it back to me. But you can also um, download those from our website. Awesome, awesome. Um, I do know, I at least know uh, one or two of the people on and I know that they're just wanting to know more information to move forward or they are in the, uh, in the process of building their, um, their farm operation, you know, what's a plant to be able to have extras to sell. Um, so um, can you 
of the link. The link. I'm sorry, okay. Tiffany, you were breaking up. Can you repeat what you said? For any way that you can put in the chat the link. For yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, I was saying, could you put a link in the chat on how um, we can um, go right? Yes, I, I'm happy to put it in the chat. Um, I'll do that right now. Can you hear me? I am having issues with my audio. Can you hear me? Yes, Tiffany, I can hear you. Sorry, I had muted myself. Okay, no worries. I was like, what is going on? Um, what I was saying is, could you put, even though they're in your slides, can you put the link in the chat box of uh, uh, A lot of farmers are in the uh, in the space of where they're trying to figure out what to plant. They have like free range to plant almost anything, um, but they want to have a direction. Um, so checking that and knowing what's really the the priority, they'll plant more of that. You know. Yes. There it is. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and we'll, and I can, um, if you make that shareable with me in an email, I will share that list to folks as well. Um, and yes. you knew this was going to be a short and sweet. Um, I thank you so much, Sarah, for hopping on and spending your afternoon sharing this information. Um, Everybody, please get out there and do the survey. Um, we're building the content around the things that you all don't have a lot of information on. Um, so everybody is well informed. So please fill out the assessments. And I'm going to stop recording.